So we got a poll. Hi, everybody. We got a poll. Was the videos of journalists faking Japan's Fukushima Reactor 4 and Reactor 3 fuel pools heinously, heinously evil? It was supposed to be hideously, but I put down heinously. That'll teach me not. I'll give you another look at reactor three. So you see this one? This is another view of it. The fuel pools are at the very top of the building. Okay, so we're going to play some of these clips. This one is ABC Australia. She's uh, Cecilia Vega. She's currently in the White House press pool. She got a promotion, a big one. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor into a safer location. Okay, so she's pretending she's pretending she's way up here looking down. So that's why we got a poll for people like her. Was the video of journalists, which is Cecilia Vega, Pretending she's on a fuel pool, above a fuel pool, on mainstream TV, that's the Australian ABC. Now, for that to happen, the ABC uh, corporation had to sponsor that, the, the corporation itself. And everybody that worked at ABC, every single journalist, said, good job, way to go. Way to deceive the population of the entire planet. This was CBS, also PB, PBS, Public Broadcasting. But CBS is the biggest media. ABC is the biggest media in Austra Australia. Uh, CBS is the biggest media in America. This is Seth Dorn. He's actually a senator's son, pretending he's at the fuel pool. A rare look inside the damaged nuclear plant in Fukushima, Japan. Nearly three years after the earthquake and tsunami, the plant is still emitting radiation and likely will be for years. Seth Doan went inside to see the painstaking cleanup. This is what TEPCO wants us to see, the heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. A hydrogen explosion tore off the roof of this reactor. At the time, Reactor 4 was not in use, but that explosion sent debris and chunks of concrete into this pool. Now you see what he's doing there? He's saying it's... He's telling you he's on the top of the building that don't exist. Do you know of another incidence where this has happened? I don't. I, there's no precedence. But everybody at CBS, every journalist there, all the, the videographers, the production managers, all the crews had to participate in that law. So you got ABC, the entire organization, the corporate office, the, all the advertisers, everybody participated. Nobody has spoke out and said, wait a second. CBS, you had the corporation of CBS, and all their subsidies, all their journalists. Not a single rebuttal showed up worldwide. Uh, this is BBC. BBC is the biggest media in Britain. So this is really why we've been brought here. Where I'm standing is on top of what used to be reactor building number four. 
The whole of this building was blown apart by a huge explosion after the tsunami disaster. But down inside this pool behind me here... So again, Harry is pointing down to a pool. And that's what the building actually looks like to your left over there. That's a Rupert Winfield Hayes. And in order for Rupert Winfield Hayes to put this up on their websites and on TV over and over and over, the entire corporation of the BBC, the, every single journalist worldwide that's seen that, and every single journalist at BBC had to participate in that lie for that lie to work. So you had every single journalist, all the budding journalists, all the, the lightings, the videographers, the production crews, the producers, everybody at ABC Australia, the biggest media in Australia, had to participate in the lie. It's the same for CBS. Everybody in the corporation had to participate for the lie to work. And... They had to know the lie existed. And everybody at BBC had to participate in that lie for that lie to work. BCB, each of these are the biggest in each of their countries, the, the number one media in each of the countries. This happens to be CNN. C, CNN plays an important role with the military industrial complex, right? We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011, leading to the country's worst nuclear disaster. Again, you have everybody at all the journalists, all the news reporters, all the editors, all the videographers, all the makeup, everybody had to participate in that lie. And no, it was a lie. For that to work, to get up on TV, nobody worldwide challenged it, which is a lie. There was people like us. There was a, it was only one that we found. This is Helen Callicott. <coughs> Helen Callicott wrote 14 anti-nuclear books. She's probably the most famous anti-nuclear activist, as she calls herself, worldwide. She has uh, Physicians for Responsibility. 29,000 doctors sign on to another organization that she uh, created worldwide, by the way. She's going to try to convince you that they're getting the water out of a pool that actually doesn't exist. Uh, building 4 is also similarly fragile and it's got a huge cooling pool on top with all its fuel rods but they have been removing them uh, and it's been a very delicate procedure and they've removed almost all. So if that collapsed now, I think it would probably be okay. Me now, the pictures, two big pictures I put there, to the left is the fake pool, to the right is the real reactor. The top uh, square Helen Callicott is the video I compressed up in that, those two pictures. They're going to ask her, does it look like the billion to the left or billion to the right? Now, she's done this about 200 times where she come out and said they're getting fuel out of the pool in about 200 interviews. Let me ask you this. You've said that uh, if the spent fuel pool in number four collapses, that you would evacuate your family from Boston. Do you think we would ever know the truth of what's going on there? And the reason I ask is because we've seen coverage in the uh, national news media here in the United States from ABC News and others that uh, take video cameras in saying that they're being given exclusive access to number four in the removal of the fuel rods, which is said to have begun. Uh, and, and what we see in the, the video being shared here in America is pristine, a pristine interior building. It doesn't look like a building in which the top blew off in a hydrogen explosion. The Japanese are very tidy people and they have, by robot control and by human beings, removed the debris from the top of Building 4 and it does look pristine. But it doesn't. You can't do that. You can't rebuild a building and call it the, the original building. If I take the tires off a car and I build a car that looks similar to it, 
I put the tires on the car that look similar to it, and I tell you that that's the original car. No, I didn't build it, even though it's obviously somebody who knows nothing about building cars built. So she's defending the law, claiming they did at a nuclear meltdown at lethal doses, no matter where you go there. Okay. This is a spokesperson for TEPCO. He's in America at the Washington Press Club. At the Washington Press, Press, Press Club. And he's going to assert the impossible by saying reactor four is no longer destroyed, which it can never be repaired because it's a melt nuclear meltdown. It's, uh, it burnt and caught fire. There's nothing left. There's no reactor core, no fuel pools. They actually atomized and aerosol and anything that went melted down, which was a small fraction in that particular building, is gone down into the earth at enormous temperatures. So let's play him. Now he's at the Washington Press Club full of journalists. And the journalists all know it looks like the building to the left. And uh, of course my right stage, the right after the accident, uh, it was of course the uh, emergency condition. But uh, right now, uh, gradually, gradually, uh, uh, became the uh, decommissioning stage, a more stable decommissioning stage. And that's that, the, as I mentioned, uh, the successful uh, completion of the uh, uh, dismantle of the uh, spent fuel from the Unit 4. The, uh, it's about 15, 33 uh, bundle from the Unit 4. And uh, we carefully uh, manipulate uh, the machine and successfully remove the, uh, those fuel to the uh, ground pool, ground located pool. But the building doesn't look like that. It looks like this. So he's showing you something that's physically impossible. The building can never look like that because it looks like that. That was reactor four. They done the same thing for reactor three. This story here was BBC. Rupert Winfield Hayes is one of the first foreign journalists to be taken inside the damaged reactor three to see the progress they had made. You can go watch the video yourself at the BBC site. So they built this 170 foot tall structure off site. <laughs> Hang on, I'm floating around where I'm not supposed to be. So they built this structure off site and then uh, used cranes to assemble it on site. This Neanderthal you see there, look at the other guy looking at the camera. Most likely this is green screen, obviously they're not at the site period, but in order to make it work, this is green screened. Now, remember, they had this assembled for about a year somewhere else, so they could have shot the video obviously then. I'm going to play the little clip, you know, I showed you, I already showed you Rupert Winfield Hayes, Pretending, let me play that one more time for you. So this is really why we've been brought here. Where I'm standing is on top of what used to be reactor building number four. The whole of this building was blown apart by a huge explosion after the tsunami disaster. But down inside this pool behind me here. Down inside the pool behind me here. Okay, so now he does the same exact thing at Reactor 3, which doesn't exist anymore. This is very strange to be standing inside here because this huge structure I'm standing inside is right on top of Reactor Building Number 3. 
And down underneath me here is the melted reactor core inside this building. Over the top here they have built a shield to lower the radiation levels so that we can come up here, so that workers can come up here to construct this. But radiation levels are still very high here. And because of that we can only spend a few minutes here. Now if you come over here, there's my alarm going off. This is the spent fuel pool. Down inside here are uh, more than 560 spent fuel assemblies. Uh, first off, there's decades of reactor cores here. So not only is the pool not... He's pretending he's on a building that doesn't exist, like he done in the other clip I showed you. But you can't do that without the entire media participating. Because remember, they ran these clips on TV. So Helen Caldicott, when asked about Reactor 3, we barely played Reactor 4. Um, and especially Building 3 is very fragile. It's still got a huge cooling pool on its roof, protected by nothing. The molten core has melted its way down onto the concrete of the containment vessel, but maybe into the earth. And if that collapsed, there would be a nuclear inferno. Uh so there, there was a nuclear inferno. Now, remember, she's probably the best-known activist on the planet with 14 anti-nuclear books, folks. Very influential. Just millions of people worldwide turn to her for the answers. And what does she feed them? She feeds them propaganda. Reactor 4, uh, the person who made the racks for the assemblies for the actual fuel pools was Ernie Gunnarsson. His wife was a spokesperson for the nuclear industry for two decades. Let's hear Ernie's version. Now, Ernie's going to try to convince you that they went in to the fuel pool that doesn't exist and put a whole bunch of supports underneath it. Now, I built the division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. And Unit 4... It has always been my biggest concern. They go back and play that. It's exactly like Fukushima. And Unit 4 oh. nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. And That's the wrong clip. So, tanks at the crippled Japan nuclear plant leaks highly radioactive water. Yuri Mari Yamaguchi, you see her show up in all kinds of the cover stories over the years. November the 7, 2013, members of the media walked down the steps of a fuel handling machine after looking at the Fukushima spent fuel pool inside of reactor number four. Look at all the journalists pretending they're in a fuel pool that doesn't even exist. There's two fuel pools at the top of these massive buildings, 190 foot tall buildings, and uh, they don't have a repository anywhere in the world, let alone Japan. And so these fuel pools are stuffed of reactor cores, which, by the way, are still splitting the atoms. Let's keep her going here. The famous elephant foot of Chernobyl plant, everything to know. Everything to know. And then they feed you a picture that's uh, uh, incredibly fake. It's absurdly fake to suggest that somebody has stood up alongside this. Uh, so 200 tons is 200 pickup trucks, one ton pickup trucks. That's how big the core was in the reactor. But media for many, many decades have been trying to convince people this is the reactor core solidified and sitting there on a piece of cement. Wikipedia, if you go there, everywhere else, you're going to see that narrative. Does that look like 200 pickup trucks of uh, 2,000 pounds in the back of each one? 
If it took 2,000 pounds out of 200 pickup trucks and dumped it right there, is that how big it should look? You can't stand up there. You can't survive that. You might, you can fall out of the roof or something, land there, but you're going to die even if it was just six feet. Because it's a lethal dose from very far distances. There's zero possibility a camera could work. <clears throat> it's got no protection on his eyes. Uh, what I mean by that, you need like four feet of uh, lead glass to protect your eyes from melting. Because they would melt first. It would die just within a few seconds, obviously, right? But you're talking about neutron bursts and gamma shines and x-rays that are catastrophic to anything with replicating cells. The load is known as the elephant foot because of its extremely high radioactivity. And they, they show you a Photoshop picture of somebody right alongside of it. Behind it, you can see a handrail there. And uh, hang on there. Some hard cases, aren't they? The whole nuclear industry has to participate in that lie for that lie to work. That picture's been around a long time. Or not a long time, rather, 10 years or something like that. So here's the original picture. So if you darken it, and you put someone right alongside of it, which in this case is me, then we can have both of us there pretending we're at the nuclear meltdown, right? But that's what you're looking at. You got them pretending that they're at the nuclear meltdown. All they done was took that picture and darkened it and then put somebody right alongside of it. And then claimed that this is real. The threat has diminished over time as a result of the radioactive components decomposition, decompo decomposition process. It's atomic decays is not a decomposition, it's not breaking down like foliage in a forest. The elephant foot is a pile of thick black corium, which is when it mixes with steel and metal and everything else, they call it a corium because it's... It, but it, before it melts down and after it melts down, the biggest byproduct of the fuel, isotope-wise, is curium. It's, just, it's meant to confuse anybody trying to figure it out. So then they named the meltdown a curium, which, which sounds similar, but is spelled completely different. And the industry likes to poke at me whenever I talk about it. That has layers on layers of glass and tree bark on the outside. Tree bark. Tree bark. There's a, like, how does a melted reactor core inside of a reactor building get tree bark on it? 